Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome around the world. This is Thursday, the Financial Advisor Day. Welcome to all my Marines around the world, from Sochi and Kassan, Russia, from the Semifold in the Ukraine, Odessa, in Kar- Kharkiv, or Kharkov, in uh, Ukraine, to our new listeners there, to our our uh, fellow Marines in uh, the 6th County Outback of Australia, the 5th County Outback of Australia, and as well as the 6 counties of the Northern Ireland. We want to welcome our Marines in North and South America, uh, around the world, and to the civilians there on Highway 8 in uh, Dundee, uh, New Zealand. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the number one show on Wind Talkers and Blog Talk Radio Worldwide. My name is Drew Malone, Ranger Third, and I will not go quietly in the night. And many of you out there have known how hard it has been to uh, fight to keep this show on the air all week. Well, we're in the middle of another thunderstorm uh, right here today, and if there's any problems, we just have to blame it on nature because we've had uh, test shows running since 11 o'clock this morning to make sure today's show was going to come off without a hitch. My name is not important. Our guest is Mr. Bob Chapman. Mr. Bob Chapman is the owner and promoter of the International Forecaster.com. That's the International Forecaster.com. He is our guest today, as he is every Thursday. And uh, we'll start off with uh, that and with uh, starting Mr. Chapman off with the uh, knowledge that there are some fears out there around the United States that this coming summer, just another short month or so away, and then the vacation time, gasoline is going to hit possibly a minimum of $6 a gallon, and will that cause a uh, domino effect here in the United States, which will be the perfect storm for a possible uprising? Mr. Chapman, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, uh, and uh, it's uh, quite a question to contemplate. Um, we have widespread unemployment. Uh, each month, more people go off extended unemployment, which means they exhausted their benefits and then some. Uh, they also... Many, many of them are out of their homes, and a lot more, over probably 1.3 million more, are going to be out of their homes by the end of the year. And the price of food is climbing along with the price of petroleum products, particularly gasoline. And it's not only gasoline, diesel is even higher. And um, there's, there's going to be great consternation. Uh, whether that is enough to cause demonstrations or rioting remains to be seen. I I tend to take a conservative viewpoint, possible but not probable. Uh, we'll see as we get closer. Uh, will gasoline be $6? Nobody knows except the people who are manipulating it. And... It's four dollars for all intents and purposes now in many cities. Uh, usually, this time of year, gasoline prices increase because this, well, at Memorial Day, which is five or six weeks away, the vacation season starts. Although I don't think there's going to be as many people vacationing this year as would have in other years. Um, I see a a fairly large drop in the consumption of gasoline and other petroleum products and also in eating habits. More and more people are going to eat eat out less and they're going to eat less. Maybe that's not all that bad. But anyway, uh, that's the way I see it. I, 
I don't think unless something happens that we don't foresee at this time. No, I don't see that. But it is possible. But I don't think it's probable. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Drew, one of the things I don't like about economists and analysts and newsletter writers is the way they try to sensationalize things. You gotta look at it like you're in the field directing a theater of combat. You you have to have all the facts and you can't dream about maybe that will happen. You have to deal with the situation with you've got the best you can. And so, with that said, uh, I think that we're looking for too much, too soon, out of too little. You need a lot more consternation than that. Mm. From, um, who was it from? I forgot. Um, I think the question comes in from Frank. Uh, ask Bob what uh, he has been hearing from his contacts in the intelligence field. And what's regarding. Next? And what's coming up? Well, next? I haven't. Yeah, regarding. You know, we got our we got our hands full uh, with the Middle East, which was created by our government, the British and the French. Um. Our president is asking for $25 million to finance a civil war that nobody in Libya wants except the U.S., England, and France. I mean, they've hired their own mercenaries. It's run by the CIA. I mean, what kind of a thing is this? Now they're talking about sending in NATO troops. They keep on bombing their own people. I don't think I'd want to be around. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. I mean, if if they were close, I can understand it, but uh, that had to be dumber than dumb. Anyway, um, those are very bad ideas. Creating, revo- uh, creating civil wars. Horrible. Because they want to go in and steal everything. Right. I mean, you know, it's a terrible choice for people in the military from no matter what country. They got to go in there and attack people who didn't attack anybody. And the other day, I saw Mr. Gaddafi riding down the road, and uh, the Mercedes had a slide back top, and he was up in there standing in it and waving to everybody, and they were cheering him on and. No guards, no nothing. I don't think that the people find him the ogre that he's been made out to be. He looks like he was pretty popular to me. And he was whippering or whipping around 10 or 15 streets. I mean, this was in a stage gem- demonstration. So America's being lied to again. So what's, what else is new? And the people have to go into harm's way when they shouldn't. They should be defending America. It's crazy. Uh, As bad as the financial situation is in the United States, uh, Obama has pledged $900 million for aid in rebuilding the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip according to uh, one Islamic organization, and I quote, we are very happy with Mr. Obama's decision. In the first place, this money will go toward reconstruction efforts. $900 million to Hamas, Mr. Chapman, with your contacts and your people in that area, uh, Hamas is a large supporter of terrorist activities, uh, what is your feelings about uh, this president donating $900 million of Americans' taxpayers' 
taxes from their phone bills and other taxes to uh, an agency that supports terrorism. Would you call it treason? Uh, Yes. Uh, I I don't agree with it, but I don't agree with the money that's given to Israel every year either. I think our government is remiss in giving either of them any money. If uh, if organizations want to go in there and help the the people with money that's been raised outside of governments, that's okay. And I don't like the idea of uh, Israelis taking target practice against women and children, I don't know, bulldozing people. I mean, what can they be thinking of? Normal people don't do that, that, that those kind of things. They must be filled with hatred. Well, hatred doesn't solve anything. And I, I don't think either of them should be getting any money. And if, if you know if they want to rebuild uh, something in Gaza, that's okay. Let the international whatever it is supply the nine hundred million dollars. It's not the job of governments to do that. It's none of their business. Uh, from for Bob, when do they stop manipulating the silver stock? Silver's up five percent. Silver stocks are up one half of one percent. Who are you talking about one day? He doesn't say. Hmm. Or she doesn't say. Well, I'm looking at uh, silver stocks today up almost 1%, up 1.35%, up 8.5%, up 1.45%, up 1%, and up 1%. That's what it's Gold been doing up. last week. Gold was up in the spot market today. Um, four dollars and ninety cents. The outside market was up. The last time I saw it, nine dollars and thirty cents. The price of silver was up as much as two dollars and twenty-six cents during the course of the latter part of the day. The last I saw it, it was up two fifteen, two dollars and fifteen cents. I think one of the things is nobody believes it. Nobody believes it. Now, I own lots of silver. My cost is about nineteen dollars on average. I bought silver this morning. Because I think it's going considerably higher. Well, so, just in the last three weeks, Mr. Chapman, it's gone from twenty nine ninety five to over forty three dollars just in three weeks. And well, I you're get, being logical, and that's right. I, but I the problem people is people don't that, understand markets, and and, yeah. and the market's telling you that there's a terrible problem out there, and it's not being solved. And that problem is that J.P. Morgan Chase and HSBC, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank Corporation, are short. They can't cover their shorts. That means they've been betting silver was going to go down. And right now, at that price, over $46 an ounce, I think it's 46.30. They are offside. They are losing. $90 $90 billion. Now, somewhere along the, la- the way, they have to call a force majeure. And what that means is, we can't deliver. And what they did was, they leveraged their bets on the short side. And for every ounce of silver they had, they sold 45. What's normal? Nine in fractional banking. They trapped and they can't get out. It could go to $100, go to $60, it could go to $48. We don't know. 
until they do one of two things. They either start to shove the, cover their shorts or they decide on one of three courses of action, telling all the contract holders they don't have the silver, which they don't. They've admitted it. And requesting the contract holders take 25 or 50 cents on the dollar for settlement. The second alternative is that they totally default for $90 billion on Monday morning. And incidentally, if they wait for $60, the number is going to be $140 billion. I don't even want to think of what it is at $100 an ounce. The third option is for the Federal Reserve, which they own. The biggest shareholder is JPM. The Fed says we're going to cover. We're not going to give the people the silver because we don't have it. We're going to pay them off. The American taxpayer will pay them off. Isn't that hunky-dory? Uh-huh. And that's what we're facing and that's why silver is up, the shares are up, gold is up, but nobody can believe what's happening. It is beyond their capacity to see this. They didn't go through the markets in the 60s and 70s and 80s as the top broker in the world in gold and silver shares, which I was. They don't understand what I understand. When you're in a situation like this, there's no logic. The big boys who created this monster are going to get it shoved to them. Big time. And, of course, the Fed's not going to let Morgan go under. Morgan is the biggest shareholder in the Fed. So they're going to stick the public with it. But what's going to happen? As a result, they'll stop trading in silver futures for a time. They'll stop trading in gold and silver options and derivatives. And in the process of this failure, both of these entities have sold, and they're short, options and derivatives. Now, the people who bought them may get stuck. And who are the biggest buyers? Two exchange-traded funds, SLV in silver and GLD in gold. So the ramifications here are enormous. But most of these people don't get it. They don't understand. They haven't been in the gold and silver markets for over 50 years. The pros understand who are on the floor. They know what's going on. People uh, at CNBC, CNN, and Bloomberg, they don't have a clue to what's going on. They think everything's going to be fine because it always was. No more pipe dreams. This is going to be very nasty. And... This was a holiday weekend because the markets are not open tomorrow. And so there wasn't any big commitments one way or the other except in silver. In fact, even platinum and palladium were about even or off slightly today. But they were up big time yesterday, $35 and $25 respectively. I don't hear anybody talking about that. The problem is The average broker doesn't know from a hole in the ground. He's a dingbat who passed the test, who gets clients, and all the decisions are made by the research department. And that's the way he functions, selling people garbage. And when the market goes back down again, much which it must... And interest rates go up and bonds go down again, which it must. They're going to be out of luck. But they don't understand all this. And that's one of the big problems. 
They can't even be related to their own clients because they're ill-educated, ill-experienced. There's only a handful of people who understand what I'm telling you. I'm one of the few people in the world who knows all about that stuff. And that's why people are not responding the way they should. They will. I saw it last time in 79 and 80, and they agreed, and they will come in. Former Marine, uh, uh, we'll use his uh, nickname as Bones, comes in and says, Drew, I've watched the market daily and weekly and monthly, and Mr. Chapman is one of those people out there that promotes uh, the rise and not the fall of the the gold and silver. Uh, but what I see is a correction, a big correction coming. Uh, maybe you can ask Mr. Chapman, uh, does he not see that the climate is ripe for, for the collapse of imic- Im- imitating 2008 and that gold and silver correction is on the future? in the very near future before it goes back up? Okay. Uh, I want the writer to tell me what he bases that on. I will send you his email. No, I can't. The email's down right now. Oh, I know. I'll, be, I'll send phone. it to you and let you, uh, you You can get it back to me. But I want to, uh, can he come back online and and tell us what he bases that on? It was an email to me. We'll see if he, he'll email it. Okay, Okay. but I'll I'll answer part of the question. There are two reasons why gold and silver go up. One of them is that gold and silver, for 6,000 years, have been the only permanent methods of having a currency. It's always been there and always will be. The bankers try to get around it, and they're unsuccessful. That's why we have panics and so on and so forth. Now, he's referring to three years ago when the market went down in gold and silver shares and gold and silver went down. And there was a reason for that. Because hedge funds and banks were long gold and silver related assets. Now, what happened was there was a Credit crisis, do you remember that? And that credit crisis forced these entities to sell all kinds of securities. They threw the baby out with the bathwater. And the result was everything went down. This time, the banks and the hedge funds, they don't own any gold and silver or stocks. There's a few of them that do, but not many. So, what are they doing? They're shorting them. And you know why they're shorting them? Because they've been ordered to do so by the United States government, especially the hedge funds. Because they can go naked short because you can't follow their trades. Because the trades are offshore, even though they're executed in the United States or Canada. That's why we will not have a repetition of what you saw three years ago. And that's why I wanted to know why this retired Marine thinks what his thinking is as to why this is going to happen. Now, I follow charts. I follow waves. I follow cycles. I'm one of the top five experts in the world on gold and silver. And you know something? On gold and silver, I've been right every time. And I agree. With that said, now, we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, with Bob Chapman, just a three-minute break. You want to get in the in crowd? You got bad breath? You got to take care of it. We've had on this show a man by the name of Robert Parkalian. His company, Vitamir, V-I-T-A-M-Y-R, the three W's, V-I-T-A-M-Y-R. His exclusive 
all organic. No, better than organic. Manufactured toothpaste and mouthwash will take care of that gum disease. Cure it. Take care of your bad breath. My name is Drew Malone Ranger III, and I support Robert Tartalian. His phone number, 888-558-8482. Again, 888-558-8482. Or you can always get in touch with me, and I will get you his contact information. Robert will save your teeth, save your gums, and make your life in the in crowd, in crowd a lot better. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second half of the first hour with Mr. Bob Chapman, and we were got uh, cut off there. Uh, welcome back to the show, Mr. Chapman. I'm here. And uh, we... Uh, uh, he, we got an email sent out to uh, to Bones uh, addressing uh, where he based his situation. Hopefully, he'll get back to us momentarily. Uh, with that, we move on. There was another question uh, that needed to get out to you about J.P. Morgan and Chase, and that they're in big time trouble. Uh, one of the Marines, a matter of fact, uh, one of the girls over at Betty's Brigade came in and says, "Please, please ask Mr. Chapman what he." If how long he feels before uh, Morgan Chase is going to have their catastrophe because they're one of the biggest supporters and owners of the Federal Reserve. And one of the kingpins of the Illuminati. I don't know where they're going to pick the spot. I think they're going to see if 50 breaks. I think they're going to spend billions of dollars defending $50. And what they forget is this, and I've been involved in these markets for years. $50 doesn't mean anything. And you say to yourself, well, why doesn't it mean anything? Because all the people who held silver positions in 1980 at $50, who might want to be sellers here to get even, are dead. Figure it out. The average person who buys a stock, 55, 60 years old. You add 40 years on to that, he's 95 to 100. How many people are living today who are long silver at $50 who are still alive? Three? Zero? 33? There is no resistance there. Only resistance that will try to be created by the Illuminus. Morgan, GS, Citigroup, HSBC, Deutsche Bank. I could go on and on with the litany. And they're going to lose. Because the big hitters know what I know. And they're going to try to stop it there. And it's going to run right through it. And then the insiders are going to have to decide at 55 or $60, we better stop this thing right here. Because if this thing doubles from here, we'll be offside three or four hundred billion. That's what we're looking at here. You have to look at the situation as a creature of the markets. And I'm one of those creatures. But the average person sure isn't. And 95% of the people on Wall Street aren't. Especially in this category. I mean, as far as brokers are concerned, less than 5% do commodities and less than 5% do options. Most people don't know that. In fact, the test that they have for the Series 7 now is 75% options. And nobody ever does them. And you know why? Because they don't want anybody to pass the test. That's why. That's what goes on. And so they don't get it. 
they're standing there with their thumb in their mouth saying, ooh, silver's up over $2 today. Gee, I wonder why. And they start to think, maybe, you think there's something wrong with the market? And that gets the gray matter going. But they don't understand. This is a highly specialized field. And only the pros know. And all these guys writing newspapers, they don't know. They don't get it. They don't understand it. They've never even been brokers. I mean, how can you know combat if you've never been fired at? Here's one Think about time. it. Yeah, exactly. Those of us that have been in combat, Mr. Chapman, we say to all these uh, patriots out here that are in their, their little uh, uh, militia units, uh, those of us from Vietnam, we look at them and we say, have you ever really killed another human being? And until you do, you don't know what you, what you're going to feel like. You don't know how to pull that trigger. And what happens if it gets to hand to hand? If you've never killed anybody in a hand to hand combat, uh, it's a big difference when it comes down to protecting your family. If you've never done it before, you can train, but can you mentally do it, Mr. Chapman? From uh, the chat room of Blog Talk, any reason to believe that there will be a temporary small drop? in silver next week, and what happens if J.P. Morgan defaults? Well, first of all, I answered the question by telling you I bought silver this morning. So you know where I think it's going. Oh, so did I. <laughs> I've been buying silver every three days. Well, good for you. I've only been, uh, I, have a, I don't have any money, but every every time somebody sends a little donation in here, I go and buy some silver from a, from a local guy that sells silver. Well, that's good. But as far as uh, when and if, I don't know what Morgan and HSBC are going to do, but I do know it's coming. I just don't know exactly when yet. I've, I've explained all the ground rules and why and how and what could happen, and uh, Morgan and HSBC will have to take it from there. I can I can assure you Tomorrow, there will be major meetings between all these characters. Woe is me. What are we going to do? These newsletter writers and guys like Max Kaiser, they're getting everybody to buy silver. They're, they're destroying us. Well, it's about time you got destroyed. You're a bunch of criminals. Um, Mr. Chapman, so here's that's a my answer. From, here's a question from Betty in the chat room. She says, if silver goes up, what about food? If food's going to go if higher. If silver goes up and all these other things continue to go up, and there's there's obviously some some inflation here uh, because uh, the dollar's not buying what it did even three months ago. A loaf of bread here in San Diego has gone to three dollars and ninety six cents a loaf. From two dollars and ninety six a loaf in the last two months. But even jump though, in the car, Betty, and go down to TJ because the bread is only two fifty down there. <laughs> I'm making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm laughing. <laughs> but no, there's nothing you can do about it, and you know you're just going to have to eat less. And I said early in the program, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> You know, I heard that. You know what I'm saying. I'm making light of it. But no, it's awful. And it's not going to get better, at least until the end of the year, in food. And uh, petroleum products, I don't know how high these, this gang wants to take them. It's been up to 115 on the barrel, so maybe to go to 120. And were they to invade Iran, you got to lock in two or $300 a barrel. And uh, what's the gasoline going to be? If you can get it, maybe ten bucks, twelve. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is it's going to be higher, and that's not good. And you know, in California, like you girls, you got to travel a lot because things are not close together, especially in the area that you're in. 
things are pretty spread out. I know the area very, very well. And, uh, in fact, my mom used to live where you live. And so you don't know what's going to happen. You just have to hope for the best and plan as best you can. You know, running out and getting another vehicle that gets more mileage, it's hardly worth it. I mean, you're committed and you have to do deal with what you've got. You know, improvise. Isn't that what the Marine Corps is all about? Well, that's what a Marine Corps wife should be doing, improvising. Mr. Chapman, we are improvising. We've, we've even had a couple of the guys... Uh, enlisted personnel have fixed the, a couple of old Volkswagens up, uh, and we've uh, fixed them up ourselves. And uh, we've got one of the girls that was able to find an old Volkswagen bus, and it's six, six seats, six of us. And all six of us go shopping at one time, saves tons of money on shopping. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Ah, that's great. Do you think? And that's that what thinking people do. Yeah. Do you think that they will, I, I, guys? Y'all keep putting they. I need I need to know who they is. Do you think they will start pricing gasoline in another currency beside the dollar? I don't know who they is, Mr. Chapman. Well, they are really in this case OPEC and the major oil companies throughout the world. That's about fifty parties, and they all get together and they decide what they're going to do. The other day. Saudi Arabian government said, look, there's too much oil out there. They cut their production 800,000 barrels, 80,000 barrels a day. And the price is going up. So that tells me that inventory and production have nothing to do with the increasing prices in oil and other things. It's speculation. Why? Because... People don't want to be in the stock market and the bond market. They would have been, they would want to rather be in things like food and petroleum products and gold and silver and platinum palladium and copper and lead zinc and on and on. You look at history. It's all there for you. How high is gasoline going to go? All depends on what happens. Could it go to 120? Probably easily. Could it go to 150? Maybe. Will we have a war? An extended war in the Middle East? Maybe. Don't know for sure. We don't know what's in the heads of those crazy people in Washington who dream of world government. The highest cost of gasoline here in Arkansas is at Valero service stations uh, around the state, uh, running in at three dollars and seventy cents uh, a gallon. Some places three sixty nine. Uh, the prices of gasoline uh, in California uh, around three sixty three uh, to three seventy six uh, at uh, normal stations. The highest that I've seen or I've heard about. California is $4.05, uh, Mr. Chapman. Uh, there, I've been a report that um, that uh, on the 18th, it got uh, in the Los Angeles area, it got up to $4.20. Uh, with all with with the speculation that's going on, uh, do you not do you see that there is going to be any uh, any company come forth? With another alternative, like the Japanese have their water car, but obviously they've got enough problems over there. They, they're they not going to be able to put that water car together for the United States. They, they may put it together for themselves. What's your input? You know, that's a hard call. We just don't know. We don't know what they're up to. And, you know, we're already dealing with what we're dealing with price-wise. And we'll call it 360. Uh, at 120 oil, maybe it's 375. Uh, maybe at oil at 148, it's old high. Maybe we're talking four dollars. And people can live with that. And the people on the inside know that. 
Are they going to have a war? I don't know. Maybe. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? Yes. I mean, they already told us they want to go over and beat up on the Iranians. And that's why they're doing what they're doing to clean up the Middle East the way they want it. New dictators, new control, steal what you can. I mean, you're dealing with a criminal syndicate here. And this is the foremost in their mind. If they go after Iran, will Russia and China join? I lost Mr. Chapman. He got he got terminated off the air, so we'll have to wait. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will keep you follow. And that will be a big distraction to the financial and economic problems of the United States and Western Europe. This is psychological warfare. And some of you people who are listening, particularly top sergeants and officers, you know you've been trained in it. Not in all of it, but at least in the military facets of it. Well, just go sideways and apply it to mass populations, financial areas, and so on and so forth. And you'll see how I back into things. Uh, Stanley in Shreveport, Louisiana. Mr. Chapman here at the Epco uh, Refinery on uh, uh, Midway and King Highway. Uh, the uh, Epco Refinery uh, has got over 70 uh, storage tanks here inside the city limits of Shreveport. I don't know how many are just outside the city limits, but every one of them is full of refined gasoline. My next door neighbor works at this plant. He he informs me there's more gasoline here to support the metropolitan area of the Arklatex covering four states that this area could possibly use in the course of three years. We've got gasoline. Dale in, down in Texas comes in and says uh, I work for Valero and all of our tanks are full. We're drowning in gasoline. Uh, we have enough gasoline, quoting Dale in in, uh, in uh, southern Texas. He says we've got more gasoline than the, Uni- than, uh, the United States could possibly use. Your comments? Well, gasoline is selling wholesale at around three twenty-two a gallon. And uh, if they've got that much inventory on hand, prices shouldn't be there, which tells me they're holding it from the market and just giving the market what it needs, not extra gasoline or lower prices. So they expect higher prices. And I think everybody in the industry does because they all talk to each other. And so they all know the market's being rigged and they're going to take it up. And maybe they'll get, instead of getting 324, maybe they'll get... 340 a gallon, that'll make them a lot of money. And so that's why they're doing what they're doing. They know what's going on. I mean, they're the people who can uh, create the market. Mr. Ch- from Betty in California, Mr. Chapman, this really is starting to read like a book. The book that I read, History of France, 1780 to 1795. The, those that have are keeping from those that have not. Right here in the United States of America, what is your input? Do you see this? Is this what I am? Am I going crazy? Well, you're not going crazy, and I've cited what you've just talked about innumerable times in my programs. And it's the same thing. They push the, per, the public too far. The public goes berserk. They start chopping everybody's head off. Now, here in America, the people who are in charge believe that they can take the military and send them out and shoot all these people who protest and riot. It ain't going to happen. They're not going to do that. And then Washington's going to say, well, 
The president said you've got to do it. If you don't do it, we're going to put you all in jail. Oh, really? I don't think you really want to do that. You know something? We shoot back. Are you guys in the White House, are you well armed in there? We'll show you what combat's really like. Uh. And, and, you know, this is why both administrations and the whole thinking process in Washington believes that veterans are the enemy. And all you guys and gals out there, and you, Drew, you know that's true. Look what they've been doing to Oath Keepers. Uh, from from uh, this comes in. I guess this is in. I don't know if this is inside information because I've got several friends that work in companies that mon- that work in the building and construction of uh, of pipelines. But from South Texas, uh, we have a comment from uh, from Dale down there that says, "What the what the uh, what the uh, the uh, what the blank is going on?" Uh, their Valero is building a pipeline from Canada to Houston, Texas, Metro, to import oil. We haven't got an empty tank on our field. Uh, What the heck's going on here? Well, there's something going on that we don't know about, and I don't have the answer to that, but it's certainly not normal. From South Louisiana, one of the leaders, one of the leaders, one of the uh, individuals down there that's a ham operator, WA5 DXP, comes in and he says there's a leader leaderless resistance, and that is the answer to our problems. Do your part. What do you feel, Mr. Chapman? I think it's already taken form, and I think it's taken form in the minds of people. As each day goes on, I think they're realizing this is a terminal situation. And we don't have any organizations. We don't have any leaders at the moment. But what we're thinking about here is we've got to make some changes. And when it becomes evident that we'll have to make them, I think we'll know what to do. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> I just got a pop-up uh uh, I don't know who said it. Uh, uh, Bob, I disagree. We have seen in New Orleans that the amount of people who fight back is close to zero. Well, let me, before you answer that, Bob, let me make a comment. Uh, oh, just, just one. Okay, just one. Uh, let me throw this at you. Uh, I am from Louisiana. Uh, I am a Cajun. Uh, I have lived in the Met in Metri, Louisiana, for over a couple of years. I lived on Royal Royal Street in downtown New Orleans, uh, with an inside square, basically a an area that was surrounded by four walls, but it was a there was a uh, probably a quarter of an acre inside that there was a a garden spot for people to sit down and eat their breakfast and communicate. I want to tell you, Louisiana people are very complacent, and uh, they were being asked uh, individually, uh, singled out at their homes, and when they opened their door, the, each one of these Louisiana people in New Orleans were basically individually doors knocked on, and there were 50 to 100 police and military officers and enlisted personnel on their front yard, going door to door. Streets had over three and 400 National Guardsmen, and they were not National Guardsmen from Louisiana. They were National Guardsmen from California. And the National Guardsmen that were in the Middle East fighting for George W. Bush were fit. There was actually almost a mutiny. In the Middle East, where one entire battalion of Marine military personnel, Marine reservists that were sent to Iraq, were ready to pay their own tickets. And the heck with the war, they were coming home because of Hurricane Katrina. And it got really nasty there for several days. 
because the word was getting to these military men in the Middle East about their families in New Orleans being accosted by police and government agencies. Right now, in Louisiana, the law has been rewritten since Katrina that no government agency to include the United States Bureau of Tobacco, Alcohol, and Firearms can come into any city in Louisiana and take the guns away from the citizens, period. Now, people around Louisiana let it, let it went by one time. It won't happen again, just one. It won't happen again. People in Louisiana learn their lesson the first time. The second time, it's going to be a bloodbath. Mr. Chapman, you have any comments on that? Oh, I think you're right. Uh, I think people were surprised, and they were surprised at uh, the people who came into the city on behalf of the federal government. And they never expected anything like that. And then you had mercenaries uh, who were there, and uh, that was surprising as well. So I, I think you know there was a, a great element of surprise that won't happen again. And, yes, I agree. It's not going to happen again. They got away with confiscating all the guns in New Orleans. But you talk to many of the people in Louisiana again. I mean, these these men and women that were there were totally, totally taken off guard because they felt they had constitutional rights, both federal and state. They felt that the, the posse comitatus laws were going to protect them. And... Uh, there, we're talking about Americans shooting Americans, and they were not prepared uh, for that possibility. I got news for you. You can sit out there all you want, but the, the people in America have, driven, have drawn their line in the sand, and the next time a major catastrophic event comes, there will be a shootout. Just look at the legislatures around the United States that are passing laws to prevent guns being taken away from people. There will be another battle of New Orleans, but i got news for you. Neighbors are going to start protecting neighbors, and they'll be shooting it out and letting the world know that they're not going to be uh, going quietly in the night. Not in Louisiana. They may do it in New York, but they ain't going to do it in Louisiana again because Louisiana people don't mind dying for truth. Mr. Chapman, uh now I had to take a deep breath. <laughs> I, got, I, get on, I get on a rampage here. Uh, Mr. Chapman, uh, do you feel that uh, uh, there's going to be any knowledge base come out for France's air car or the Japanese uh, water car to ease this catastrophic event on oil and greed? I really can't answer the question. I, I just don't know. Hey guys, the lines are open. Anybody out there want to call in? Uh, well, we're over you're, time, you're aren't we? Uh, we are out of time. I'm sorry, that was my girl, <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Uh, I hope you and your, your beautiful wife have a good day at the golf uh, match this week. You going to be able to play? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll mix it in with church. Mix it in with church. <laughs> all right, we'll see you next Thursday, sir. You better believe it. All right. Thank you Have all for listening. You're gonna be are you gonna be Bye-bye. on uh, you're gonna be on the radio tomorrow? Absolutely. Okay, we'll have we'll we'll get the uh, the word out there. I think Alex Alex Jones show? Yeah. Okay. Well go have a good one. And, and I'll be on with Melody Cedarstrom. Me, Melody Cedarstrom? Outstanding. Is that on uh, the American Voice and Radio? I don't even no, I don't think so. I don't even know. Oh, okay. We'll 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 find. I just out. go and do my job. I don't even know what station I'm on. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for coming in. God bless you. God bless Judy, and y'all keep up the great work, please. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, we ladies and gentlemen, we went over. We didn't realize we were going over. We'll be back in five minutes.